the last eight, nine days have been a living hell, a nightmare beyond words for my, for my mom and for my family. Hi, I'm Lily. And if you're new here, I have lived in Thailand for the last 11 years. I met my husband, Wat, when I first arrived on the island of Koh Samui in the Gulf of Thailand. And Wat is Thai and I'm American. And I have a blessed life. I have three beautiful children. I have a nanny from, from Myanmar who is like a sister to me. And during COVID, I started making this YouTube channel. I started posting videos because Thailand was completely shut down and my restaurant that I owned with my husband had to close because there was no tourism. And when I started this channel, I never expected it to take off and be a, um, a life source for my family. And this channel's changed my life and all the people that follow me and support me in prayer and comment and who are subscribed. I appreciate you all so much. My channel took off in 2021 when Thailand was still under quarantine and under lock, I'm sorry, under lockdown. My mom, who is my biggest supporter, she came to Thailand, did all the paperwork and put herself through a 16 day quarantine. So she was locked in a hotel for 16 days. And she did that because she wanted to see me and my new newborn son, Leon, and my whole family, my family here. And we spent one month together and we went to all these five star hotels and we made, I made videos of it. And I, they were really cheap at the time because there's like no tour, tourists. And as I was posting these videos, my channel started to take off and my mom took, and I took a train. We made a train video to Bangkok and then we, departed we parted ways in Bangkok and I said goodbye to her and that video when I posted that video within a few days I got 50,000 subscribers and that changed my life and my mom comes to visit me two times a year in Thailand and stays for a month or two months and she is an amazing woman she is a strong believer and she is a hard worker and she's always taught me and my family to dream big and she's always encouraged us. <sighs> so in the, in the beginning of this year, I felt called to go back to the United States. My parents live in Idaho and I am a woman of faith and I felt God was calling me back there. And I said, okay, I trust you. And I didn't really want to go, to be honest with you. If you watch that video of me departing Thailand, I was very emotional in that video and I didn't really know why, but I knew that there was something big that was going to happen in my spirit, in my heart. I knew something, but I never expected this to happen. So the plan was to stay here for four weeks with my middle son, Leon, who is three and a half and he's never been to America and he could meet his cousins. My younger brother, Rob, he's 13. 13 years younger than me. He was in town from Nashville, so I would get a chance to see him and I get a chance to spend time with my family. And then my mom and my dad, George, we were planning to come back, to fly back to Thailand together. So the trip here was coming to an end. So the trip was coming to an end and my mom, she loves Thailand. It's her time to to get peace, to relax. She owns a clothing company called Grace and Joy. She and I started that together about 10 years ago. And she works really hard and she is under a lot of stress. And Thailand is her time to relax and get peace. And when she comes to visit me, I really just pour my heart and love into her to encourage her and to build her up. And she was so excited to come and Monday was the day before we were supposed to fly out. Monday morning, she and I were driving to Walmart to pick up the last things and she was talking and she started to forget some words. And I was re really confused, like, can you, asking her, can you explain like what, what you're trying to say? And she couldn't explain it. 
I was like, huh? And she just laughed it off. She's like, I'm just tired. I haven't slept in a few days. Like she has some insomnia that she's struggled with for a long time. And we were walking into the Walmart and said, mom, let me pray for you. And I started to pray. I held her hand and I started to pray for her. And then all of a sudden she kind of veered off to the, to the right. And she almost ran into a van. And I was like, really scared. I looked her in the eye and I could see that she was scared, but then she was like, oh, it's just because I looked down when I was praying and it's just because I was looking down and she brushed it off. So we go to her clothing shop and my brother and sister come in, came in and I'm, I told my sister, you know, mom's kind of forgetting some words, but I, you know, she just needs a good night's sleep. I'm sure she's going to be fine. I mean, I was thinking maybe it's a stroke. Like, you know, my mind was thinking maybe she, is she having a stroke, but she had no physical physical manifestations of any type of stroke. So I was like, she's just, she just needs a good night's sleep. And then the situation just continued to get worse. And she started calling my sister and my brothers and I the wrong names. And we were, my brother was like, okay, I'm going to drive her home. And he drive, dro drove her home. That's when we saw that she was calling him the wrong name. She was calling my brother, Robbie, Chloe. And when we saw that, we were Robbie was like, oh my gosh, we need to go take her to the hospital. And my mom is very, can be very stubborn. She was like, no, you don't take me. Just take me home. Take me home. We were right in front of the house. So we, Robbie just pulled in. My sister gets on the phone with my, with my dad and they call the ambulance. The ambulance arrives at the, at the house and they come in like four or five men and then they st and my mom's really upset now because you know she just she doesn't know what's going on and she just wants to go to Thailand so bad. They ask her, "What is your name?" And she couldn't say her name. She kept saying George, George. That's my dad's name. And that's when I was like, "Oh, I'm so scared." And they take her to the hospital, and then I go in to see her, Robbie, Chloe, my dad, and. By the time I get there, they say, they're at, I'm in the room with her, and the nurse asks her, do you know who she is? And my mom said, no, 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 no. She doesn't know who I am. She doesn't know who any of us are. And they're running tests, and they're trying to do M MRIs, I believe. And then they decide, like, they don't know if she's having a stroke. Like, I just think she's having a stroke. And we're asked, like, can we give her stroke medicine? Or, you know, there's a four hour gap. If you're having a stroke, they can give you something for that. Within four hours after that, they can't give it to you. And they said they couldn't give it to you, to her because it was too late. They sent her to, they transferred her to another hospital that's an hour away from our house. And my dad, George, he went to go spend the night with her. That's Monday night. Tuesday night, Tuesday day, we go to the hospital in the morning, me, Chloe, Robbie, and she's sleeping, but she doesn't know any of our names. She can't talk. What she is saying doesn't make any sense. And what we're saying to her, she can't understand it. Like I could say my name, L Lily, Lily, and she can't, she can't understand it. And that was really scary. They're still running tests. They're doing spinal cord, a spinal tap. They're doing M MRIs, EEGs, EKGs. I don't know, a lot of tests. And it takes time to get them all back. Tuesday, oh no, that was Tuesday. Wednesday, George had spent the night at the hospital. That was like the worst morning for him, was Wednesday morning. I hadn't gotten there yet. And she was just saying, January, 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 January. One, 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 one. Like she was just repeating dates and cap and numbers but then as the day progressed i was there my sister and rob brother were there i was praying for her i was on my knees i was fighting this with prayer she started to get better her words starting to get better and when we realized when we could write something down she could read what we wrote as long as it was one word or two words she could read it but she couldn't understand it we're still waiting for the tests to come back we had an infectious disease doctor come in. They're wondering, is this something that she got in her travels abroad? The doctors are dumbfounded. They've never seen a case like she, like, like her. What her speech patterns were so unusual that the doctors came in to record it for 
Thursday, her she was becoming more cognizant and she could understand more things and we could communicate with her better, but her moods, okay, by that time they were giving her lots of steroids because her brain was inflamed. They saw that there's mass inflammation to her brain. So they were pumping steroids in her, which was helping her come back to consciousness, consciousness. And, um, but her moods were like going out of control. She would go from being really angry to really happy and excited. And I think that was maybe from the steroids. And it was really scary to see my mom get so angry. We were trying to keep the phone from her, but in her, like in her mind, she thought she was okay. And she kept asking for the phone and trying to call people, but she was not okay to call people. So dealing with her that day was emo emotionally exhausting and terrifying. And then that day was over. And then the next day, you know, she started to talk more clearer. The steroids were working. She was more her old self. She was more soft and gentle and not out of control like she was on Thursday. So Friday we are driving to the, to the hospital and we're thinking like, oh my gosh, she's getting better. Like, wow. And I go up to my mom and I hug her and Chloe, Chloe's hugging her. And then my mom says something like, I have brain cancer. And we're like, what? What? Like they had never said anything to us about that. And the doc, the nurse was like, well, you don't, well, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. And my dad, George takes us to the waiting room and he explains to us that there's like an 80% chance that she has CNS central nervous system lymphoma, which is a rare form of brain cancer. Or another possibility was that she has mad cow disease out of the two options. CNS lymphoma is the best because there is treatment for it where mad cow disease, there is no treatment for it and it will get progressively worse. And I looked up CNS lymphoma and what I saw about it was really scary. And only 1,500, only 1500 people in the United States are diagnosed with this every year, every year. So it's an extremely rare form of cancer. And when they told me this, like, it felt like my whole world was crashing down. <sighs> I've cried so much this week. It's been such an emotional roller coaster. We haven't slept at all. I never expect, expected this to happen. <sighs> and I felt like I was having a nervous breakdown, like I was having a panic attack. And then somebody said, oh, we're going to get the chaplain. And they sent the chaplain in and he sat and talked with me and I could feel the peace returning. Oh, it was horrible. And we were driving home, me and Robbie and Chloe. My brother Robbie, he says, this is the worst day of my entire life. And I said, Robbie, I'm so glad I got to be here with you for it. And, uh, a Saturday we came in and she was really sad because she's realizing like what she's facing and we were there just to like encourage her and build her up. Sunday we go in and by, it was by the afternoon, like we were there all day from morning to evening time. Saturday night we spend the night in a hotel next to my mom, me and Chloe, and we're just there for her till late in the night so she wouldn't be alone and be lonely. And then Sunday, Sunday afternoon, George left around four o'clock and then the doctor who's been treating her, he came in and he says, is, is George here? And we said, oh, he just left. And, he's, and the look on the doctor's face wasn't good. And I said, I want to hear what you have to say. And he said, okay. So before I talked to this doctor and he said that she was in remission from the CNS lymphoma and she has three weeks to a month before it will come back and it will come back with a vengeance. And really their hospital isn't equipped to treat this. So George has been working overtime to get her into the best hospital that we could possibly get her into. And he said that we have like a three week window before she has to be somewhere for treatment. But then the doctor came in on Sunday and he said, because they had done a second MRI, which was five days apart from the first MRI. And he showed us the MRI and he compared the first MRI that they did with the second MRI, MRI and they went up her, they showed us like the scans that go up her brain. And then he showed us that there was a mass that was forming behind her left eye 
uh, on the left side of her brain behind her eye and that this cancer is coming back very quickly, quicker than he expected it. And he looked like not optimistic, but we are standing on our faith. And that was like a huge blow, but we had some people there that were praying for us and we were there to pray for us right after Chloe and I received that news from the doctor. And then George has arranged for her to go to MD Anderson in Houston, which is one of the best cancer hospitals that you can get into. And we are standing on our faith. We're, we have like hundreds and thousands of people praying for my mom. And I want to show you a video that I did with her on Sunday before she was admitted from the hospital. I'm tired now. I'm just Can tired. I smell the in here with you? Are we talking yet? Mm -hmm. Are we talking yet? Are it's you... 11, 12. Hi there, everybody. It's Gigi in the hospital. <laughs> Who would ever have thought I'd be here? I'm supposed to be in Bangkok, and here I am. Oh, well, Thank don't you. cry. Sorry, Dry I'm your eyes. I'm trying not well, to. Well, on Monday, I started feeling a little sick, and I couldn't talk. I couldn't do all kinds of stuff, so they took me in an ambulance. Oh, I'm tired now from thinking about it no, all. Don't think, Mom, no, don't I don't think. mind. I can sing. I can think. <laughs> and then Tuesday, I was really out of it. What else did I do on Tuesday? It was rough. I couldn't even write. I couldn't even write hello. I couldn't write. What is it? I, I, I couldn't write anything. I would struggle to try to write something. I was like, I can't think. It's I would say, bibbidi boo and blah, blah, blah. It's and you are saying, schmapple pie. Schmapple pie. Bibbidi boo yeah. January 1, 2, 5. My brain went dead. And so they did a bunch of tests. And sadly, they found out that I'm, they're 80% sure I have brain cancer. Isn't that a bitch? <laughs> At least I'm still laughing. And, oh, no, I'm not really laughing, but I don't know what else I want to do but to laugh. So I've been going through all these tests here in Coeur d'Alene at the Kootenai Hospital. And Wednesday, um, go, Tuesday, I'm flying to Texas to the, what is it, MD Anderson Hospital. My husband, he got on the phone and he got everything arranged and he didn't know for an answer. So we fly to the hospital Wednesday. They've already had a lot of tests done, but they're taking Jamma, Grandma to the very best. So everybody out there in the YouTube world knows that I'm going to get treated and I hope I get better. You are going to get better, I'm going to get better because I'm a, I'm a warrior at heart. I am. Here I am. <laughs> Don't cry, babies. Dry your eye. Everybody's going to give you a pizza pie. <laughs> Lily and I have really stuck together during this. And, and Chloe, too. Chloe, too. Marcy, too. I didn't see, I don't even know what words I'm saying. It's okay. But you're yeah. feeling better now? I can talk now. I couldn't talk in the middle of the week at all. I couldn't even spell, I couldn't say anything. I was just yeah. like catatonic. You didn't even know who we were. I did know who you were, but you I had to think. didn't know our names. Yeah. No, I had to think. I well, was like. Well, it was interesting because you knew how to, you could, we had to wear name tags and you could read the name tags. I could, but I still didn't know who you were. <laughs> Just didn't know anything. You, act, you acted like it, so that was well, good. I'm a good actress. I can fake it. I didn't know anything. I could, I knew George. That's the only name yeah. I knew. Well, at one point you thought your name was George. Well, I did. And, I was, then, <laughs> and then you've had some want some symptoms of people talking in your in your ears. I still have that. It's driving me crazy. I hear my mother, who was Southern. I hear my mother go, Susie. What are you doing? And I'd go, Mom, I don't know what I'm doing. And she'd say it again, Susie, what are you doing? And I'd say, Stop talking to me, Mama. But then I would laugh. I have a good sense of humor and I'd laugh. And we're going to fight this together and yeah. we're going to fight it with It's grace. all in my head. See, I have cancer in here. They, Mom, they think. I'm just watching yeah. that. But I'm going to fight it because I'm a fighter. Don't cry. I'm girls. sorry. I, I know. I said I wouldn't cry. And I've cried so much. Oh, wow. This has been the craziest week of our lives. All started up right and away. down, up and down, because we didn't I have know. any diagnosis. They had no idea what it was. They even at one point thought that it could be mad cow disease. <laughs> they said mad cow disease. Oh, and what was the other thing? We can have more. Encephalitis, aphasia. I don't know. Leon's Alzheimer's. Been... I told my husband, I do not well, have Alzheimer's. Well, they, she had Alzheimer's like symptoms. Say hi, Leon. No, I couldn't. Leon. Hey, love Gigi. <laughs> 
Liam Rick, give me that so, candy. Liam's He's the best so little boy. And calm. We had the baby it's here. Yellow. We had the kids here. And we all really appreciate all of your prayers and your thoughts and your comments. You can leave us a comment. Leave Gigi prayer of a support in the comment section. And it's kind of, sometimes it's kind of easier for us to get like quick posts out on our Instagrams. So if you want to, I'm sorry. So if you want to follow Lily and I or on Instagram, here's Lily's. Lily's Life Official. And then Chloe Simone Says. Chloe, my, this is my younger sister. She also has a YouTube channel and she's going to be posting videos of Gigi that she's had from the past and also yeah. posting short videos about like what you're going through. I know it's hard. Yeah. She has a, just has a, a newborn. Yeah, so I mean, I'm like, it's hard for her to more, post like really edited videos, moments. but she usually posts live streams with mom. Well, you know what? We have very good insurance, but it may not cover everything because it never does. And that might help us do a little bit of extra fundraising yeah. because even though we have good insurance, it might help us a little bit because it's going to be an expensive trip. So yeah. we are going to get through this together. And you can help us by bing, bing. purchasing one of our Gigi Oh, we're going to have new sweatshirts. Gigi switches. We already have them, but we don't have a lot of them. But they are on our website. What is it? See, I can't think. What is our website? ShopGraceAndJoy.com. And then we have... What do we have? See, I can't. The, I'm sorry. The sweatshirts. We're selling Gigi sweatshirts. Yep. They're super cute. My parents, fortunately, have really good in health, health insurance, which will cover a lot of it, but it's not going to cover all of it. And this is taking a huge financial toll on our family. And I plan on being there by my mom's side. I'm actually going back to Bangkok tomorrow dropping my son Lee off, Leon off and picking up my son Luke and then we're flying on a one-way ticket to Houston because I need to be with my mom to walk with her on this journey in this battle that we're about to that we're fighting right now and we know that it's going to be a mountain that we have to climb and that God is by our side and he's he's been working miracles despite all of this Despite all of this, we are still praising him, and he is so good. And my mom had designed these GG sweatshirts before she had gotten sick. You can be just like GG and buy our GG sweatshirts. This is an all cotton sweatshirt with embroidered GG. Comes in navy blue and white with pink. So be like GG. It would really be appreciated if you would purchase a sweatshirt and it would be a, such a blessing to her and to our family and I we really appreciate all your prayers I know not everyone can buy a sweatshirt and I just appreciate you all so much love you all out there mom's best days are still in front of her that's right I'm not giving up god it bless came, you all. this came so fast it came Monday night Monday night they took me in that ambulance I was like what are you doing I'm going to Bangkok I was going the next day I'm not happy about that, but whatever. Yeah, see, I can't talk right either.